Yo, what's up my piffers, what's up my squiffers, and what's up my lonks? How to bootleg. Bootleg hip-hop has been around since my nan. It's a hugely popular aesthetic, usually made for fashion, but seen all over the shop. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys inside of Photoshop, maybe you're trying to make some clothing, or maybe you just want this design to post on social medias. On the screen at the moment is what the original bootleg hip-hop designs look like. These were usually made for t-shirts, nearly always printed on black, consist of a few colors with loads of grunge textures on the top. Then there's the more modern bootleg hip hop aesthetic. Today what I'm going to be teaching you is a more modern spin on the bootleg aesthetic. Be more stylized, more colorful, more like the stuff that you're seeing on screen right now. I've made a free pack to coincide this video, giving you guys all the textures that you need. Drag and drop styles that are kind of made to represent the bootleg aesthetic, like the diamond, the gold, all the classic ones, but with my own kind of spin, more like more spangle. So I'll be teaching you how to build a scene of images and then how to edit it with things like the oil effect and the smudge tool to make the images appear in higher quality. How to do things like change an outfit and color grade each image so that the scene kind of ties together and looks like it's all one photo. And then before wrapping the video up, I plan on mocking it up and getting it printed to see what it looks like on an actual t-shirt. So stick around for that as well, my dudes. And now let's open up Photoshop and see what we can summon. Alright guys, so once you've got Photoshop open, your first step is to decide what you're going to make. Start getting creative, finding images. Good thing about this aesthetic is you can actually pull images from the internet and not worry about the quality too much because you're going to be blasting all the images with effects, textures, lighting, grunge and all of that kind of stuff. So the image will be very different to how it started and when all the effects are on top, a low quality image ends up looking quite good. So don't be too fussy on your images, just pick images you think will build a nice scene. Now for the sake of this video I made three mock-ups so that I could kind of decide which one I thought would be the best to teach the video with. First was for a blind freestyle rapper called Blind Fury. You can see that the next stage after collecting your images is to kind of start adding crazy effects like outer glows and lighting and oil effects just to make the images start tying together. I'm going to demonstrate how to do this on the Yeet one because it's a little bit more simple but I thought I'd show you this as I think it's quite a good idea before you execute an entire design. Have a go at making a few different ones see which one's looking the best and then run that one to the finish line. So you can see I've already started adding effects to this Yeet one. There's some shading over his face to make the edges of his face darker and the inside lighter. I've added things like this on the glasses and the outside of his coat hood to create highlights. I'll take this layer off and demonstrate how you do that because it's super easy. All you'll need to do is with a pen tool, draw across the area that you'd like to make a highlight, a nice fluid curve and then pull it back and make it just a little bit thicker in the middle like that. You can then add like a white brush. Now you could fill this entire thing in and make it very intense or make the brush a bit smaller and keeping it on a soft setting, not too hard. Click just in the middle. So now you can see it kind of fades out like that. Now using a smudge tool, just by going left and right, left and right, you're gonna make this look like less intense of a line. You could duplicate it again just to have it a bit of extra light and then tweak that one as well. The smudge tool is super, super useful actually. All I did with this one to make it a bit different is I overlaid a little bit of green to tie into the image. But yeah, the smudge tool is super useful and is also used to fix too much grain and noise and texture that you don't want on an image. Say these skulls are a little bit too sharp for your liking, you can give them a really nice blur just by dragging it around like that. I did the exact same thing with this money. I used the blur tool just to give it the effect that it's kind of falling out of the sky in the matrix, you know, just like I did here with these numbers. If things are too sharp, too crispy everywhere, it's not going to look great when printed, so I would work on that. Remember to check out the packs. When you have the packs, you can literally just drag and drop bootleg textures directly onto your image. It works on text and images. Something to note when using these assets, I created them on a document that might be a different size to what you're using. So if things don't look right, you're gonna have to open it up, go into some of the settings and perhaps you wanna change the depth. Perhaps it's the size that needs to be tweaked to make it look the way you want it to look. The settings aren't quite right. You may just need to tweak some of the sliders until it looks how it's supposed to. Alongside the blur tool and lighting tools such as overlay brushes, for example, clicking like this over the face and setting it to overlay you see that's now lit up Yeet's face and then you can do the exact same with a black brush to decide where shadows are going to be super simple to do that so that doesn't need much explaining but the other thing i'll teach you is the oil paint tool because 
that the oil paint tool gives a slightly cartoony and blurred look to all of your images. This is a good thing to do if your images aren't looking great next to each other. Like say with this Conway piece, if I wanted to take this any further, I'd say that the image on the right is way too washed out, image on the left is too dark, and then the saturation, everything here isn't working right. However, now if I add some color overlays and oil paint all of these images, it should start to tie together more seamlessly. All the textiles that you're seeing in this are directly from my pack. Remember there's a deluxe one if you want to get some of the extra trippy effects, but it really ain't necessary. You got everything you need in the free one. A common color trick within the bootleg aesthetic is just to hit colorize here and it will take the whole image and blend it into one color. With bootleg designs, especially the older 90s ones, there's typically two colors, three perhaps, and maybe the third one is very minimalistic, like maybe a black and white image and just a chain or one item of clothing has color. Um, so you could do two different colorizations. Say we wanted to make Conway a kind of purple. And then with a clipping mask or a selection layer, you could then change the color of another piece of your image. So we've now broken a very colorful image down into just two different colors like that. You can help yourself to the textures in my pack. There's trippy textures. There's some simple grunge and fabric textures like this one, which just gives a slight pop to your image another way of tying everything together, making it all fit a bit better. But there's also other textures, like very trippy textures that I've made. Could help you to create something like this piece, which I made the other day. I overlaid this mental texture on top of a BLP kosher bootleg design that I created. And then I added a threshold effect, which I blurred to give me this really fluid threshold, um, kind of minimalist bootleg design. With all of this pattern and texture in it, which has come directly from the texture in my pack, I might put that at the end, or let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a speed out of that if I don't put it at the end. I've broken down here for you as best as I can in the simplest way possible, all the stages that goes into a bootleg design from the very beginning, arranging the images, pulling them all together with lighting, color overlays, noise, textures, and sometimes the oil paint effect and the fonts the typography and the styles that go on top of them bootleg always has crazy trippy styles that really pop out on t-shirts so yeah guys i feel like those were the most important bits to cover and kind of demonstrate for you we're gonna see what this design looks like mocked up and printed using kittle it makes mocking up images so easy on so many different templates and it puts all of the overlay textures and the lighting onto the clothes that you need so definitely go check them out in the description if you plan on making some clothing they can do the printing for you too stuff comes out really high quality i personally like using their svg threshold tool which simplifies any image that you apply this effect to it also separates colors for you so it can turn a complex image into a flat image like this in just a few seconds i also made a bootleg template for the people on kittle which i'll link in the description you can obviously switch up all the images and the text but i used the kittle ai generator to make those crayola drawings and made like a minimalistic bootleg template so if you're interested in checking out kittle whether it's for the templates the mock-ups the printing or just to make your design from scratch i'll leave a link down in the description so you can go and check them out remember you can also get my free or my deluxe bootleg pack and until my next video guys take care bye